noble caravan, a pair of men, a prayer that spans the sky. Appear a moment there has never been to pierce the sands of time. For over a decade in Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has called his people to believe in one God alone, to believe in the afterlife, and to be people who live with good character. As the message of Islam was spreading and the resistance against that message was intensifying, Muslims started getting tortured and persecuted just because they were Muslim. They were insulted, they were tortured, they were boycotted, and they were even killed. He knew that he had to leave Mecca. He knew that they could no longer stay there. He would look for people that he could relate to, and perhaps through that discussion he could build a relationship to where those people would offer them sanctuary and stability and a community that they could call home. A delegation from the city of Yathrib in the north come to Mecca. They meet the Prophet, they embrace Islam. They said, if your faith, if this can help us solve our problems, then we will be united under you. And this is how he begins to lay the foundation for this historic, monumental shift. After 13 years of hardship in Mecca, where the Muslims patiently endured all kinds of persecution, God granted them a way out. The Prophet instructed them to emigrate to Medina. If the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, the problem would be beyond the reach of the people of Mecca, and now Islam would be practiced without oppression and without boundaries. They were determined that Muhammad would not escape their hand. And at some point they came to the conclusion that the only way they are going to prevent him is to kill him. The assassins gather around the Prophet's house and they rush in to kill him. They reach his bed, throw off the blanket and find that his cousin Ali stayed in his place. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, had miraculously escaped to the home of Abu Bakr. But rushed they did in anger's grip to tell their leaders how, despite the plots, the plans were foiled, the Prophet was not found. He comes to Abu Bakr and he says to Abu Bakr, May Allah be pleased with him, that you are going to be my companion on this journey, on the Hijrah, on this migration. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was so overwhelmed by that, that he started to cry tears of joy. And he started to say, as suhba ya Rasulullah, am I really going to have your companionship, O Messenger of Allah, as suhba ya Rasulullah? And Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the daughter of Abu Bakr, she said that, you know, I've, I've heard of people crying tears of joy, but I never really knew what it meant to cry out of happiness until I saw my father on that day. They stay there for a while and they go towards this cave that is called Ghar Thawr or the Cave of Thawr. Though the Prophet and Abu Bakr had been hiding out in this cave, the Meccans were out um, searching and looking for their target. They were all scouting for him, hunting for him, and they had the city on lockdown. When they came upon this cave, you would think that you know they would explore the cave. However, right before they arrived, God miraculously caused a spider to spin a web at the mouth of the cave. And furthermore, a small bird had camped out and created a nest. Of course, if someone were in this cave, the web would have been broken, the bird would have been disturbed. One of them said, there's no way Muhammad and his companion just came into this cave. After spending three nights in that cave, when things calmed down, the Prophet 
leaves the cave, looks at Mecca. إذ وقف يخاطب البلد الحرام ويقول والله إنك لا أحب بلاد الله إلى الله وأحب بلاد الله إلي ولولا أن أهلك أخرجوني منك ما خرجت So on their way again they went, the Prophet and his friend. A journey so momentous, it would make time begin again. The Prophet, peace be upon him, took an unconventional path to Medina. What typically takes a few days, he finished in nearly two weeks. The hijrah was very difficult, it was painful. His life on the line, literally, in several instances, and we're not just talking about one or 10 or 15 or even 100 people. We're talking about hundreds, all of whom had one thing in common, this collective intention. These were people who were leaving their homes. These were people that were leaving where they were born and raised. They were leaving their entire lives behind. They do whatever it takes to connect with their beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was leaving a place that he loved. And sometimes we have to leave things and people and situations that we love. And in that leaving is a migration. This is the event that begins the Islamic calendar. Literally, it is an event around which all of Muslim society, Muslim civilization, and the religion of Islam is revolving. It is a period of time where great changes are about to occur. The people of Medina had been waiting for days for the arrival of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and that moment had come. That exact day when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, arrived in Medina, people were overjoyed, they were happy, they were excited. Everybody left what they were doing, dropped everything to run to the outskirts of the city and give him the welcome that he deserved. They gave assurance to the Prophet they welcomed the Prophet. There is now this release of spontaneous joy. The Prophet's here, the Prophet's here. Ahmed the foretold. They beat their drums and there they sung his praises from their soul. Brothers and sisters, as you struggle with whatever you're struggling with, understand that the opening will come. That the darkest part of the night is just before the dawn. Allah is with us. Allah is with us. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who struggle in our path, we guide them to our pathways. Never despair, never lose hope. Be patient, the opening will come, just as it came for the Prophet ﷺ and for his community. The beginnings manifest the ends. So the way that the Prophet works in coming to Medina is the most marvelous beginning of the greatest story that was ever told. The study of his life is that which changes our lives. This is where faith becomes practical. This is where spirituality becomes practical. What journey are we taking our family? What are we teaching our children in terms of connecting with the problem?